Hello everybody, welcome to Bass and Bonsai, right? Bass in Bonsai, Bass and Bonsai, however you want to say it, it's up to you. Look us up, if you're just catching this video, somebody recommended this video to you, or this is the first video you've seen, we have over a thousand videos, mainly to do with bass fishing, but a lot of other stuff, Bonsai. Today we're getting out here and we're trying chatterbaits, chatterbait rods, chatterbaits kind of going in depth a little more on chatterbaits. But right now we're getting out here with chatterbaits. So I'm hoping I've got a couple of those chatterbaits. I've got three and we're trying out three chatterbait rods. That's our newest uh, rod and reel combo we got, but mainly for the rod is what I'm gonna try for chatterbaits. And yesterday, if you haven't checked out that video, check out that video. We were tearing them up with multiple colors, but this color right here, and if you'll see, when you go check out that video, they were spitting up crawdads. Guess what color the crawdads were? Yeah, exactly. So for whatever reason, the water clarity or whatever this place, I don't know if this color is going to work. But we're going to try this color, and we may switch to different rods. And I got a crazy balance thing going on just to try to make myself like this. This is a, probably the heaviest combo I own right now. But we got that rod in the mix. Probably my favorite still right this second would be this. That 13 Fishing Fate Black. Oh yeah, that's a 6 foot 9 medium heavy, the uh, Bass Pro Carbon Light 2. Uh, this is a six foot seven they consider it medium i call it right on that edge of medium heavy i like the way it's got enough bend and i'll show you the bends once i put you guys on the chesty probably the most sensitive and the lightest six foot seven fate black awesome rods but then we also have the one from aliexpress and yes that other one and this one both have zillions on them way better reel than the carbon light but the carbon light it's no joke it's a decent reel and i'll show you i've added a clicker to it but this is that uh and this one we have here, it's considered a medium. I call it definitely a medium heavy. It's actually stiffer than the medium heavy uh, from Bass Pro Shops. But this is a contest, Lure Star contest, and this is the Sharp. It's a six foot uh, eight. It so is, uh, it in the middle, we've got the six foot nine from Bass Pro. This is a six foot eight from uh, AliExpress. And then we got a six foot seven, our old school 13 fishing, right? So I'm gonna put you on the chesty, buckle up, hang on. We're gonna get out here and try chatterbaits, see which rod and reels, com compare them kind of overall, but mainly try to just catch some fish on a chatterbait, right? These are, we'll be comparing a little bit that. This isn't, the main comparison's the, rod, the rods, but we'll check it out. These are the AliExpress ones you can get for 350. They kind of uh, jackhammer knockoffs, and we got a couple jackhammers still floating around. But buckle up, hang on, let's go. You know what, actually, I'm gonna start you guys out right there. Yeah, you guys will be able to see. It's not really top, top water I like to have you on the chest because if I turn, I want you to see the top water hit. Chatterbait's not so much. I still try to keep the boat turned, to keep you in action. But let's catch, ooh, I know. I have a, my attention span. I just, we're like at the perfect spot. Even though the wind's not there, there's a stump just sitting there staring at me. Now I'm gonna try, start out with this color and our and i did balance it hopefully balance enough see that i added a bunch of weight to get it to balance six foot nine it's a thicker one but i'm trying it today i had it yesterday i fished it unbalanced so oh i yanked it right off something i should have just pulled it over so sensitivity still there it's shaking the whole rod i actually i think it's more sensitive when you get them balanced but maybe not. When you put that weight inside, this is actually a very good, you guys can tell I'm kind of starting to get used to it. My accuracy is not bad. I'm not going to give each color very long. It's not about finding the color. It's just about trying these rods out. So I need to find a color. Hopefully it's that green color, which I think should work here. And then try, you know, I'll put it on all three rods and we'll just go around chatterbait fishing. And I think it's going to be a slow. And I did set the carbon light at it. There you go. I got one. I got one. He got bigger. Whoa. He got big. Jeez, I thought I had a little bitty fish. Sucker got huge. That is a three pounder. I cannot get the boat turned. He's trying to circle me. Oh! Did you guys see that? I hope you get out of there. He's freaking under the trunk. Get out of there. <laughs> As you can tell, this is an awesome combo for chatterbait. 
it just flat out works. Look at him. Do not, don't you do it. Jesus, you guys seeing this? Come here. Get over here. Oh, right off the bat. Told you this color may not work here. Woo, I'm telling you guys right now. I am all about chatterbaits here. I don't know, summertime, man, chatterbaits. Like, let's watch all these guys put together baits that, you know, June, July, August, whatever. Year round, ah, I hooked myself, is not the chatterbait. But above 55 degrees, it's all about the chatterbait for me. That, look at that fat toad. Oh my God, girl, I love you. Mwah. Love bass fishing. Mwah. That is a toad. Hang on. I need a pick and I'll be back. This show got started, but it started with a bang. Let's go. All right, look at that. AliExpress knockoff. Game over, right? Time to stop the video. There's your ultimate rod and reel combo for chatterbaits, right? No, we just got started. But we are going to weigh this fish. Hang on one second. I was going to guess this at a three pounder, but yeah, I was would have been real good. 3.1. Did anybody guess that fish at 3.1? Huh? Jay? Eugene? What'd you guys guess? I was thinking that it probably only is about a two and a half pound bass, but it's so thick and fat. They're living right here. Let's see if she'll jump. Come on. No jumpers. Oh well. Whew. Not gonna lie. I figured the bite would be on today because I just finished a topwater video and it was pretty much game on. So, although I just want to, I just want to keep throwing this. I just want to like just just keep throwing it, Hicklin. Just keep throwing it. No, I'm gonna switch real quick, and we're gonna go. That was the longest, supposedly the most stout, but I'll show you the bends here. I'm gonna show you the bends later. We're just gonna jump real quick to this color right here, this rod in particular. And I've had people come in about, I'm not a girl. I don't care if this and that matches. Well. I mean, I'll fish with stuff that mismatches whatever, but why not, if you've got the opportunity or the chance, why not have the stuff match, right? So we got purple on a reel, purple on a rod. Oh, we got a purple bait. And this bait has been an excellent bait. This color has been an awesome bait. So I'm gonna throw it right up here, just to double check. I always like to keep throwing, you know, if you catch a fish in the spot, throw in that same spot and uh, I'll talk a little bit more and I guess I'll give the shout out to the people that they didn't really teach me but I, I've re kind of uh, reestablished yeah that's you know I agree with them and how they do it and whatever and they're, they're a lot bigger names than I am basically but uh, if you guys all know the you know the king I guess of the chatterbaits just because he won so many tournaments with them is Brett Height right but he fishes he fishes the chatterbait I guess for the most part on the rod and reel setups and line and all that totally different than I do. He probably fishes it the exact same way. But his setup is totally different. And I think what he what a lot of guys have in mind is totally different from me. I still would swear that a chatterbait fish think and I think you're trying to the best way is you're trying to uh I started to say intimidate. You're not trying to intimidate Crawdads. You're trying to, uh, oh my God, I'm a moron. I done lost my train of thought because I, I it popped in my head. You're trying to imitate, but uh, intimidate popped in my head. You're trying to imitate a Crawdad in my mind. And that's what happens when I get out here and I'm all excited about catching fish. There's a little stick sticking up right there. So this color may suck. But it does work. It was working yesterday. This, this, uh, what I call now just my purple haze chatterbait. And I did start, I guess I did need to mention that. And I'll talk about Brett Height in a minute. I started running just my old zinkers on the back. And it seems like my hookups are good. Like that, that fish you just saw, I didn't even talk about it. But that was the zinkers on the back of that, uh, chatterbait. And I do not have any luck fishing chatterbait with no, uh, kind of trailer, no kind of soft plastic attached uh, behind it. I do with spinnerbaits. And that's all I ever, the way I fish spinnerbaits for years. But chatterbait, I've always just put like a crawl, something to imitate a crawl. But here lately, I will agree, and I think the reason people try to put swim baits and stuff like that, 
especially what they're coming out with more and more they're finding you just want a little bit of plastic back there kind of like the spinner baits originally that had those little and i'll even show you one because i got it rigged up on this chatter bait that i could try at some point back in the day and i remember buying the man's the man spinner baits like came with these little uh, just a little trailer deal to run on your spinner baits and i think similar to that is all you need with the chatter bait you just want something back there that's following the blades doing all the work and you just need a little more bulk and it's better to in my opinion to have a salted or something that scented to where when they do grab it, it just gives them to hold on longer because what I was going to talk about about Brett Height, and he kind of reaffirmed like I'm oh dude you're totally right I rewatched some of his old videos and I noticed and without paying attention I've gotten away from how you set a hook on a chatterbait I just been oh oh you know carelessly just you know quick yank knee jerk reaction when you feel a hit or if it slacks the line and you you know you you hear Gerald Swindle talk about slack line and you know jig bites and stuff like that that has nothing to do with chatterbait and that's what uh, Brett Hyde talked about on a chatterbait and but Brett Hyde I've not heard anybody famous in the fishing world mention why they you know they just talk about you know you want to feel this net and I've only heard one other YouTuber talk about why I think also is why you want that. I guess I might as well mention it in this video. This is the true all-on chatterbait clinic, right? When you're working that bait, everybody's seen underwater footage. It's it's a lot of times I like it when you get this skirt material riding up like this. It just gives that bait a little bit bigger look. But what happens, majority, not every bite, some of them they just come all different ways. But the majority of your bites are fish coming at you and they slack your line, right? You just it get, whoa, it stopped chattering or whatever. So if you just yank, here's what I think happens. That fish came up, he hit it, he slacked the line, which probably the force of the water basically shuts that. It shuts the blade, the fish has it however in its mouth. When you just yank, you're basically, that's like a huge mouth opener, can opener, mouth opener for a bass. It's like, boom, that pops or while it's dragging in their mouth, it's basically working like a weed guard. It's keeping that hook from getting in the mouth until it clears the mouth, then you're getting barely hooks or something else, you know, your force of your hook set's gone. So what you wanna do in your mind, and it doesn't even matter if that's not how it works, because trust me, it definitely is better to feel the weight of the fish, sweep around, feel the weight of the fish, then do like whether you do a, try to yank it out of the water or a quick pop or whatever however you set the hook on a side sweeping motion that's when you do it and here's what's happening in my opinion this is what's going on in my mind is I'm pulling you know he hit it so I need to catch back up and I need to pull until I feel that weight now what should happen is that hesitation before I feel the weight is I'm straightening this back out he should not let go he thinks he's tasting that salt or the stuff he think that thing's in there wiggling around trying to get out. That that pull of this straightening that blade out. He thinks that thing's alive and it's still wiggling his mouth. So he may even bite even harder. He may even like clamp down, try to get it down in his little gut further, right? He's in there like trying to crunch on it in his little whatever they call it, cruncher deals. So when you do that, you're pulling, you get that kind of basically clear. It's up here anyway. So then you got all this open area so then whenever whichever way you set the hook you know inside you could tear into them or you may just be a guy that you know just gives it some people do that i'm, I'm notorious for doing that because i don't want to yank a little one completely out of the water so i give it a hard but a quick and i'm not yanking the whole thing out right that increases your hookups now these smaller aliexpress ones comes with smaller hooks okay well I'm gonna throw this a little bit longer, this color, but I'm gonna go back to that orange. Here shortly. I'm gonna get on that dam. The wind's blowing on the dam, we'll hit it, and we're gonna go hit that point. Should be able to get on some more fish. That's shallow, that water's way down. Now this is a spot, I see a little bump right underneath me. This, if you can kind of tell where the water's down from the bank, this bank does come out very slow. So I'm gonna throw one 
almost like straight out in front of us and it's still not that deep it's only like two foot so Got the party started with the bang and then nothing, but I stopped throwing that orange one. It's been a long time. I'm gonna put you guys on the chesty and we're going back to that orange dude, plain and simple. Then I'll go through these rods a little bit better and show you the flex on the chesty. I think it'll be better. I have oil, but I don't think I brought a Phillips screwdriver. I don't think I want to try to monkey around with like a knife or something in there. I mean, this is only the second day on a brand new reel. It'll be fine, even though there's another one. Oh! Well, we may have the color. I do have one more of these this color. I can rig up on another rod, but I'll probably have to switch it to back and forth to the other rods if this is the color that they want to hit over all the others. Look at that, dude. I'm telling you right now, I like that rod. I don't think I like that reel. I like the looks of the reel, but I'm not sure if I'm going to like that reel. Awesome. Look at that jumper. And now just to show you, that is an old, nasty, flattened zinkers that I had no use for anymore until I'm like, you know what? Let's just start putting zinkers on the back of our chatterbaits. And they're so soft, they just get back there and flutter. I'll try to show you that. I don't know if you can make it out. Like you see the, it's just back there, you know, going along, just something back there moving along. And I think that's all it takes. That's all the fish needs, that extra little, you know, gives the bait a little long. I think a skirt by itself, I don't know if the blade makes the bait move too much or what's going on when you try to run one by their cells, but I feel you do not get near the hookups. But you just add a subtle, you know, just a, and it's probably just a weight thing, just a little more weight. Try to match the color the closest you can, and I don't know, it's just like game on. And if you can get by with old linkers, right why not so i'm gonna go with this one he's got that little bit of a paddle kind of a crawdad-esque type deal going but see that slender it lets it move i i've fished it for years with i probably too big of a crawdad still worked but once i slimmed him down and i went away from the uh, perfect skirt that kind of umbrellas out it lets them, I feel you get maybe another hit or two here and there just because it lets it be a little erratic when you do change up the, you hear that? It's the only downside about the uh, T-wing system, it can get chattery with the chatterbait. Got one. Oh, came unhooked. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Fate black. I felt like I did. I don't know. You guys tell me. Review that footage. Well, 13 fishing, fate black. That is one strike against you. There's one. That one should stay. I definitely felt like I did as good a hook set as you could do. So I'm finding that it's a possibility that definitely that, uh, and I'll show you that here right now, I guess. It's a possibility. I'm trying to find a borderline for you guys to look at. Borderline and that outline behind background, basically. Hopefully, can you guys see up there maybe? So see that bend? That rod is kind of, it may be a touch fast, but then the whole rod, so that medium part of it, that they're called medium, is kind of like a, I just like that. I feel like it's a good one, but the fact with the braid and all that, it possibly could be that it's a too, you know, just too much, uh, too quick for a good hook set. So let me show you this one. So I feel this one is almost the same. It's hard to explain. I don't know what about it 
because sitting there filling them <laughs> they feel so close and this one feels like a softer feel they look I mean they look close and they feel close now this one actually maybe just a touch stiffer like for the whole rod once the whole rod starts bending may be a little stiffer and then this one if you guys can see that is probably the stiffest of the bunch but I like that feel let's switch to this dude so we got one on one off for the 13 everything so far that's hit that uh now it could be that they're just eating the bait better that orange color so we may switch colors around here shortly but if I had to uh say I would say that, that six foot nine is a just a touch more forgiving on uh the hookups with the chatterbait anyway but if you remember right like i talked about it's, i think it's due to that blade and the popping and all that and that's why yes maybe a bigger longer rod and actual knot braid may help but i think if you have it and you get used to it and you know what you're using you know that's why a lot of people go with mono on a top water just for the fact that they almost can't set the hook too fast like a something hits it and you yank it there's like a delayed reaction you know basically i've been watching a lot of uh, joe rogan and elon musk it's a data transfer thing you're trying to transfer a hook set to that bait and a mono definitely is a delayed reaction to get there but if you're fishing and you know you got high speed data right you know you're fishing with google fiber and you know it's instant you kind of you know pull fill the fish or just hesitate think in your mind let him take it you know then set the hook whatever it takes for you to give it a split second and it's something you kind of probably have to practice or just get out and fish a bunch slow down But I will say that both the hits on the, I feel the 13s are more, I can tell exactly what's going on. I could feel that bait get light. So then I pulled around till I felt that bait again, then I yanked. For sure on the second time. The first time I may have jumped the gun. And I know, oh, that, that, oh my God. That had a pull, that, something hit it from the other way. I just had a hit on this bait. It may look like I'm reeling it faster, but it is a little slower ratio. 7.5 to 1 compared to 8.5 to 1 on the other two. Try and find a little deeper. There's one. I was not. Oh, that's a nice chunk. I was about 10 foot or 12 away from that bank. Never even got close. Let me keep this boat out of here. Stay buttoned. Well, if I just don't typically lose bass on this rod. This is will be my new rod for chatterbait, plain and simple. Even if it's not, in my mind, quite as sensitive, it's definitely a horse of a rod for being comparable to, you know, most stuff everybody's using. It's not super heavy or bulky. It just flat works though, right? Look at that. Oh my God. Do we want to weigh this one? Let's just weigh one. I know we're in the middle of a test video. We're going to weigh him up. See if he'll jump. Zeroed out. Two, five. I'm going to call it two and a half. Two and a half pound largemouth bass right here, right now. Coming in. Oh no, it shook right out of my hand. Did not want to jump. I don't know if you guys even saw any of that. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So if you remember right, I think I'm one for one on this. Or now I'm two. I'm uh I don't know however they put it, one and two. I've caught one and missed two of what I felt were pretty good hits. That one we got. 
What do I have? Is that a fish or a turtle? That may be a monster fish. Oh, it's a freaking turtle. I knew it. Dude, again? You don't listen. Look at you. Look at you. Look what you gotten yourself into. That poor turtle, I don't have him. Dude, he has that bait. That is a jackhammer. That's a $16 bait, dude. You don't even know. Oh, you're going to tear it up. Hang on. Oh, my God. You guys want to try to watch this? It's going to be me. Hang on. Dude, hold on. I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. Do not. He's almost got it. He's almost got it. Got it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that jackhammer is tough now. I got to give it to him. They make a tough bait. <laughs> I will say, oh. if you are fishing a chatterbait slow enough for a turtle to hit it, you're doing a pretty good job, buddy. So we're down there working her. We're working her good. Them bass just ain't on that. Bass, I should have checked. I didn't even check that line. I give too much faith in P-Line Original. Or did I check that line? Sometimes I, I guess my mind, I just check it and I don't even, you know, pay attention that I checked it. But definitely when you catch a turtle, check your line. He was poking and prodding at that stuff with his paws trying to get it unhooked imagine if your fish were like that they had their you know their fins they could move and grab at stuff oh wow that'd be wild there is some kind of, i think there's a catfish somewhere that basically can crawl and walk around on ground talk about like an alien type deal it breathes underwater yet it'll crawl and get you sharknado 27 Coming to theaters before you know it. All right, come on. That turtle liked our funky combination. Well, we got good odds with turtles. I caught a turtle a couple weeks ago. Well, has it been a month ago? No, just a couple weeks ago, I think. A couple more turtles than I had catfish this year I think I've only caught the one I think I've only caught the one big catfish on chatterbait too chatterbait I guess tells you maybe I'll throw chatterbaits too much what do you guys think all right everybody I'm calling this one done putting an outro together I'm gonna try to catch one more showstopper I'm gonna try to catch on this rod for the simple fact Although it, it's awesome for throwing chatterbaits, I've yet to catch one on to show you guys in this video, that is. You know, the, the hookup ratio. So far, the Bass Pro one, it's winning because it's, it had this bait on it and caught the most fish. And I do not think I missed one. Once I felt like it was there, I had it. So I'm going to end the show with this dude up in this area. going to try to catch one more bass. <laughs> Sharp, you better hook and get that bite you get so out of the three i have to call this the winner just for the fact the real no the rod yes the bass pro shops rod just i like that action right? they just have that general all-purpose kind of feel but i think it, that is what you want is perfect for chatter baits and it will go along a lot of other ways for a lot of other baits but today and yesterday this thing Today, I don't think I missed a fish. Yesterday, I was trying a white bait, and I wanna say, well, I can't remember exactly, maybe that white and light orange bait. For whatever reason, I had two hits kinda of close to the boat, I missed both of them completely. I don't, you know, I started thinking, that was early on, I was like, man, this rod, I don't know. But then I went on to like a tear and was fine. So I think that was just, they were hitting, they were short striking, like right at the boat kinda of deal, probably, seeing me and you know whatever they were doing was part of that contributed to that so i do like this uh rod and reel combo i'm still up in the air i'm on the reel you may see a zillion on this in the future 
This dude, I'm I'm leaning towards. I'm not. I'm gonna stop throwing chatterbaits on it just because today's a perfect example, and it does happen. Uh, I'm not. I'm, usually, it's better than half, but like today, it was half, pretty much. You'll, I'm catching half the fish that once I feel that weight, and then they're just off, right? They either pop off before they even jump, or they jump and they spit it. Maybe something to do with this rod, and if anything, I don't think it's the action. I don't think it's the bend of the rod. I think that right there is about perfect for for a chatterbait and the the power and that uh, action of it. I think the sensitivity is what's lagging, and it could just be the fact that I'm today and here lately I've been throwing a lot of different rods, and so when you end up with a pretty sensitive rod and your other ones aren't to that level, you'll be you you get jerky with that rod. That bite is so intense compared to the other rods. You just immediately it's just something in your brain kicks in. You're like you know you think you like missed it or something and you kind of set maybe too early catches turtles awesome though so it's still up in the air but as of right now you'll probably try to fish with that uh that bass pro shops one. that's kind of what i wanted once I, I and i don't know if i even maybe i never even felt that six foot nine when they first came out or maybe they didn't have it i don't know but when i felt that right at bass pro shops i'm like there we go that's maybe even better than this rod but they feel so close i just i actually call this one just a touch lighter crisper more sensitive than the bass pro one which for me fishing braid is probably not a good thing right as far as hookup ratio but if, it, if that's the only one you have and you're sticking to it i think you can adapt to it so anyway hopefully you like that video i think they're all awesome rods if you have any questions about any of the stuff just like anything else Look for it yourself in my videos or online, but if you cannot find it, you know, then comment below ask, asking about a certain thing. And no, I don't make these hand handles for anybody else. You can't buy them anywhere. I make these myself. I sometimes wish I could make myself like the regular handles. I just leave them on when I buy a reel, but I have just gotten in the habit. And I feel there's too much clutter in the way when I fish with the regular uh, handle, you know, that has both. Uh, knobs on it it just almost feels like something's in the way and it saves me money i don't have to you know buy two quarts for a reel but i'd probably if i could get away from this i'd probably just fish the ones they come with and whatever it wouldn't be a big deal and i i know i end up putting i'm not going to do it to that uh bass started to set the hook for that whatever it was but I think it was crap. so anyway thanks for watching guys i'm gonna try to put a showstopper in the boat with this combo and uh i think it's a pretty good one also but stay tuned to further testings but whatever you do go out and have fun doing it i'm gone but stay tuned and if you haven't subscribed to bass and bonsai please do so and hit that like button i know it sounds like something simple you know because i do it too i'll just be watching videos next thing you know like i did not like any of those videos you know you just get in that mindset please like bass and bonsai that helps for overall everything about the, helps the channel hitting the like button if you're subscribed subscribe to the channel sharing the videos if you like this video or other videos share them on your other uh you know social media platforms thanks for watching guys i'm gone but it is dirt shallow up that way i don't know how much further up that way i'll go we're going to try Still trying. We haven't given up hope. Putting the showstopper together. With this. There we go. That may be a bigger bass. It's a nice chunk. I, I did kind of, I have to give it to the rod. I did a weird hook set up and over you guys. I think I got it. Oh, I think I got him good. Get up here. So there we go, showstopper extraordinaire. Way to go, dude. You are awesome. Mwah. He's a jumper. Let's see. I know he's a jumper. I, I can feel it. I'm like Robert Duvall and Lonesome Dove and any other movie he's ever played in. Days of Thunder. Feel it in my heart. Open range. Check him out. Robert Duvall. Whoa! Did you guys see that? He was gonna jump. He's not a Robert Duvall fan. Clearly, Kevin Costner, I guess. Yellowstone. You guys know Kevin Costner? Got something in your eyes. Yeah. Anyway, check it out, guys. That was a showstopper. Go 
little faster. I think I'm not going fast enough. Get through that gun. There's another one. That is that a is freaking crappie again. Catching bass, crappie, and turtles on the chatterbaits. There might be orange crawdads in here too, is why we're catching everything. Everything's eating orange crawdads. You look delicious, huh? I'm gonna... No, do not lick your crappie. It's gross and disgusting. All right, man, we're having fun. I've had a blast, actually. I've caught... There's a little brief section there where I guess I was trying too hard over on some of that, mainly that point. The dam was a little bit of production once I got into the shallower stuff. I could probably slow down here and throw a worm, probably that last orange zinkers. It'd probably last the whole day with that one worm unless I broke off and catch some fish. Man, it's been it's been a good day. <laughs>